when they go down, they're extremely volatile currencies. So can they actually be trusted? All right. Well, there are certain types of cryptocurrencies. So if you're interested in stability, there are certain types of cryptocurrencies that are intended, that are designed to be stable. Um, and so those, you could trust them as much as you trust the mechanism that makes them stable. Some of these are backed by reserves. Some of these are algorithmically determined um, or, you know, basically stabilized in a decentralized manner. Um, my, you know, my focus is on community currencies. And um, so what my, what my personal answer to that would be is if you're using a system of, for example, mutual credit, um, then the value is inherently stable because it's denominated in real um, value that's, that's determined bottom up by your trust in other people and your, by your community, by actual use, um, rather than a, a value that comes from, you know, a top down monetary system, which is, in a way, it's, it's what makes all these uh, prices so volatile in the first place. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm sorry. No, no, go on. <laughs> no, no, go on if you're not finished. Um, I, I, yeah, I, uh, I, I can talk about um, trust lines in particular if you want, um, or we can save that for later. I'm sorry, I just don't, I don't know what the... We can, we can talk about it now or we can talk about it later. It's really like whatever you want, whatever <laughs> makes you feel uh, comfortable. Um, yeah, well, uh, I, I did prepare a short presentation on trust lines, which is the particular system that I'm working on. Um, and maybe it would make sense to share it now so you have more of a, a, an idea of where I'm coming of from. Course. Of course. All right, so um, yeah, I just wanna make a note um, that um, my focus is on bottom-up monetary systems and blockchain and cryptocurrencies are not, they, they are peer-to-peer, -peer, but they are not necessarily, in my opinion, bottom-up monetary systems. A blockchain is simply the infrastructure or the database on which you can set up a monetary system among, uh, among other things. Um, so Trust Lines, the project I work on, it does, work, it does run on a blockchain. Um, but in many ways, it's the total, uh, you know, it's the polar opposite of typical cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin um, and the volatile uh, cryptocurrencies that, you know, that are often in the news. Um, just uh, keep me grounded if I'm, uh, if I go over um, the time limit, but I'll, yes, I can share my screen if that's okay. Of course. Okay, so I'm going to run through this um, pretty quickly, but uh, I work on the Trust Lines Network, um, and within this project, we often talk about uh, something called people-powered money. Now, this is a term that comes up quite a lot in um, discussions about alternative currencies um, and community currencies. And mm -hmm. um, generally, people, um, ha everyone has their own uh, interpretation of what this means. Our vision is a mutual credit network um, based on individual trusted relationships. Um, so in particular, what that looks like, um, uh, the trust lines network is is built off of individual trust lines. Each trust line looks like this. Um, so uh, a trust line is two credit lines that are issued bilaterally, so back and forth between two people or um, entities that trust each other. In this diagram, Alice has given a $10 credit line to Bob, and Bob has given a $10 credit line to Alice. And this is purely based on trust, but it could be anything. It could be, you know, they could write a contract, a legal tr contract or something. Um, so now that Bob and Alice have formalized this credit relationship, they can use it to send payments back and forth. Um, in this diagram, Alice has sent a $5 credit to Bob. Um, we call it an IOU because she owes him money. Um, 
And what this does is it decreased Alice's available credit from 10 down to five, and it increased Bob's available credit from 10 up to 15. Um, now, the two of them did not use any real money when they made this transaction. They just used pure credit, I owe you, you owe me. And in fact, neither of them needs to have any money for this relationship, for this payment system to work. Um, it's not, uh, so, so obviously if you're just sending credits back and forth between two people, it's not that useful to put it on a blockchain. Um, but the brilliant thing about trust lines is that you can use this the system, um, sort of like a social network, to connect strangers. Um, and so two people who don't know each other, uh, like Charlie does not know Alice, does not trust her with a direct credit line. Um, Alice can use this network overall to still send a payment to Charlie. Um, she would do this by first looking at the graph uh, or the social network overall um, and looking for a mutual friend. Mm -hmm. So here, uh, here Bob is acting as a mutual friend. He knows and trusts both Alice and Charlie. And what happens essentially is that Bob can send a $5 IOU to Charlie on behalf of Alice. Bob can facilitate this payment. At the end of the transaction, Bob has plus five from Alice minus five in Charlie, um, with Charlie. So he's, it's the same to him. It's as if nothing happened. Um, but Alice and Charlie had the experience of making a payment. Um, and, and that's it. That's what Trust Lines is all about. It's, uh, we had this vision of um, a, an entire money system that works purely based on individual credit relationships. Um, it's like a mutual credit network, or it, it is a mutual credit network, um, but it's more decentralized than um, previous types of mutual credit, both because it's based on bilateral relationships and because it, it lives on a blockchain. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to uh, skip through the rest of this for, for time, but there is an app. Um, it's a very customizable network. It's easy to join. Um, yeah. Thank you, Aliza. Um, Thank I'm, you. I'm actually going to come back to you to talk more about that. Uh, but I'm going to.